Welcome back to Soul Purpose Leaders interview. Today I have an amazing guest and just want to, if this is your first time, welcome. In Soul Purpose Leaders, it's bringing up all the leaders, speakers, mentors, um, coaches, authors, entrepreneurs, uh, network marketers, any type of leader out there who are actually working for themselves and they who are working for themselves and they want to help other people by their profession or by something that they actually do because they love doing it. And this is why we're here. Rather than going online, looking endlessly for one person at a time, you can have so many here in this platform. Today, I have an amazing, my beautiful lady called Manjit Kaur and uh, has a tireless, bouncing, energetic Christ Christ charismatic personality, empower all the will to achieve with enthusiasm and continue perseverance. Manjit does not know how to give up. She presses on, she presses on till the goal, till the goal is achieved. Her smile is her strength. Her experience, you will embrace. Her persistent in reading the goals, sorry, reaching the goals will mag magnetize and encourage you. A life spent in attaining the knowledge of holistic Ayurveda and natural medicine after running over two decades of her own five clinics, she is now inspiring, training, coaching, and teaching people, practitioners, and entrepreneurs how to live a happy and harmonious life. Manjit, born in Kenya, continued mm -hmm. her, her father's studies in UK and four other continents in helping thousands of patients recover from whole host of illnesses and life-threatening illnesses when NHS has given no hope for patients other than surgery or chemo. Manjit has also been very successful in helping couples to conceive with 90% success for women with PCOS or history of infertility in both male and female patients. 2019, six of her female patients fell pregnant and all carried their babies full term. Wow. Rejoicing more success of female patients conceived from July 2019 onwards on during COVID lockdown this year, so 2020, she continued to treat her patients and stayed in contact with her patient and support. Five women have delivered babies from month of March to July. Wow. And now Manjit is supporting and working with five women with their fertility program this year. Worldwide, known as Asian media host radio and TV slash Sky, um, shows over two decades. Her vegetarian cook show have inspired people to go back to good cooked meals using all Ayurveda herbs and spices, which is medicine for body. Her chat show were inspired talking about community related issues, a philanthropist, a public speaker, TV presenter, coach, charity award winner, Sikh Siwada, community worker. With charity very close to Manjit's heart, she put large funds in a mammoth water ir ir irrigation project with Bantu tribe in Meru village in Kenya. Manjit continued to set up a, a gave plant to so, Soroti in Uganda, for which she has awarded PhD for her research and wrote a book about a gave plant and alternative sugars, bringing awareness of diabetes and dangers of high consumption of processed water, so processed sugar. Manjit worked and helped win widows in Punjab to open small business and guided and coach, coached patient in drug, drug addiction center in Punjab. She, sorry, the application of health, 
uh, lifestyle, she walked alone to find her path and took challenges in country where no woman would dare. Her passion, her strength, her ability, her dreams, her patience, her endurance to survive the roughest, the roughest of terrains is making of her blueprint. Let's join hands together to make your health your wealth. Welcome, Manjit. Welcome to the show. How are you? Thank you so much. I'm very well. Thank you, Barki, for an uh, amazing intro. I'm uh, very touched. And I didn't know, uh, sometimes we forget our accomplishments and carry on with life. But yeah, you've just made me come back to base and say, wow, yes, those are really ringing memories of going into such remote areas. But really the whole journey, Barki, uh, uh, you know, starts from home. You're born in Kenya, so am I, so Jambo Dada, Jambo Sana. <laughs> And, uh, you know, I didn't know there was a link here until, uh, you know, you offered me this amazing time of yours uh, to do this interview. So, yes, um, it starts from home and it starts from our humble upbringing from parents where, you know, we were, uh, we are a family of six siblings and uh, uh, the humble produce mom would get and make with the prayer and bless that food. And we would nourish and nurture from it, you know, without having all these fast foods and these oven baked foods. And little did we know much about sugar and, uh, uh, you know, fried foods. If they were, they were really homemade, you know, mm -hmm. and the restaurant food didn't exist and home juicing and everything as I continued to study and came into UK then, I realized what was humbly put on our table uh, as a very nutritious meal had so much value in it. You know, when we are young, we think parents are wrong. Or we used to question mom why I need to have a fish capsule back in Kenya. And she would say, it will do you good. You know, the why, what, and when is when a kid is curious. But in today's time and age, we need to answer that. And this took me on to a journey of uh, practicing holistic medicine, mentoring people into nutrition, health, diet, mindset, uh, meditation. I'm also Reiki master. Mm -hmm. And especially during this pandemic time, uh, reaching out uh, to so many patients uh, who try to contact me and trying to give them time over the phone, uh, how they can actually keep themselves balanced and so their kids who are also suffering a lot from anxiety and uh, uh, feeling low, uh, feeling incompetent because they feel they haven't had enough education, uh, school classes uh, other than home studying. Uh, it's a big task right now. And uh, that's where I come from. Uh, and I think with alternative medicine, what happens, one thing leads on to another. So I started with colon hydrotherapy, nutrition, juice and diet with Dr. Walker, and then went into uh, Reiki, uh, then looked at all the different massages, then went to uh, Ayurveda, and I still felt I wanted to know more uh, why uh, aqua punching will give me my patients more um, quick results as the lymphatic system, wherever it's blocked, we unblock it and work with the chi energy. And that led on to aqua punching, you know. But that didn't stop because I still wanted to know more about Ayurveda herbs. So I went and connected with the very old folk in Sri Lanka. Colombia uh, to find out what their secrets were, which were written in Sanskrit, which I would never be able to read or get somebody to translate. So sitting with these men with great wisdom gave me so much knowledge of what are the combinations I can do to create uh, and help people to recover much quicker than pill popping, liquid preparations from Mother Earth, shrubs and roots and leaves, uh, are so much have so much more value and you would also know from back home where the tribes treat themselves with everything that is in in, in the mother earth mm -hmm. uh, 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 and they would just pull up a bark uh, or, or uh, you know a shrub or a root and crush it and uh, give it for a purpose to heal you know so that all started from home all my Amazing. journey yeah that's beautiful yeah. and also you mentioned there for 
seeing in your childhood, your parents, uh, the way you have been treated as well from home. There was not a lot of restaurants and there's not a lot of, uh, like when you came to this country and found the difference of it. Now, what sparked your, pa your passion? What sparked this curiosity to just like, we need to feed healthily. We need to be able to actually teach and also learn from it. What came out? What is that you associate with yourself and say, this is, this is me. This is why I want to do this. Yeah, I mean, it all started with food as medicine. Mm. And if I don't look at food as medicine, eaten correctly in the right mindset, cooked in the right way, eaten at the right time with the right constitution, again, sitting and eating and not food on the go, I found that even giving capsules and pills, everybody would not benefit unless they have got the, some set rules and some things that they are doing wrong in their daily lifestyle that is also uh, not helping with their symptoms and absorption of products. So it's all started from uh, trying to get them to understand about shopping, the right food, uh, cooking it or juicing it at the right time of the day. And when that starts in, you start noticing a rapid change of absorption of products on a nutritional, cellular, molecular level. And then the recovery is quicker. Otherwise, if they're not going to eat well, they're going to come back every three weeks later, four weeks to say they've had little improvement. And that's where I then homed in to say, um, I need to do that. I lo did look at sugar being in the Western country, a big problem. I wrote one book, which was the agave, which is what you introduced me for, uh, in the beginning, which I took to Uganda, Saroti, which is a natural syrup extracted from this plant, which gives you a produce after eight years. And then I, I actually became um, author and a uh, um, mentor in the book that I wrote, which is The Health Haven. And this one actually has been hitting number one uh, on Amazon in two different categories. I wasn't even expecting one category, but it hit in two different categories. And it was a joy and still bringing people a huge amount of encouragement because once they've read it, they feel like they implement it. And the most amazing one I've had of recent is uh, somebody lifting themselves from anxiety and stress and the other lady who's lost three stones in weight after reading my book and implementing the suggestions in there. And she gave me this wonderful feedback and I thought, wow, that's amazing. And that, uh, you know, uh, brings the wellness in the patient and the feeling of trust they start building up because whatever they've tried before hasn't helped them, whether it was going on a diet or, you know, she went on several diets and spent thousands while she spent time on my Reiki healing sessions and tapping sessions I did, mm -hmm. implemented that with the book uh, she read and the changes that I had suggested in the book. And there was she reaping the rewards. So that's where it comes from, darling. But, uh, you know, the passion to write the book was to lift people's, uh, um, I would say, misunderstanding about food and the connection between health, mind, body, and spirit. And until that is not there, the disease does not step out. You are emotionally locked. There is an imbalance and there's physical problems. Uh, or, or fatigue, of tiredness, of allergies, hormone imbalances, uh, could be a toxic overload of food or a structural imbalance or vitamin and mineral deficiency, but that also is coming from food, doesn't always come from pill popping, you know? So uh, that's where I come from and that's where I thought I need to make these changes with diet and nutrition. And when I, sp when I spend a lot of time with Dr. John Walker and I decided that uh, colon hydrotherapy, which became an accidental journey into my life, I realized it was the therapy I wanted to do because your gut today and especially now is known to be your brain, your second brain that communicates with the, the upper brain in whatever symptoms or illnesses or deficiencies you have. And all the cravings are coming from the small intestine of telling you to eat when you haven't eaten the right nutritional breakfast. One would go out for having donuts or uh, a chocolate or a packet of crisps because your body has not had that morning nourishment. So uh, putting that into contest, I found that there was a rapid recovery uh, from all uh, patients with all sorts of illnesses. Yeah. 
Tell us a bit more of your clinics that you were running for over two decades. Um, what was it about and what, what made you to just like franchise to have five clinics and what was the purpose of that to have the clinics and everything? Well, a widespread one because patients couldn't travel uh, from distance or they, some of them had never left their home or only traveled down to the shops and back. So I thought, why not take the, the, my product and my service to them and, uh, uh, you know, right from here to, um, to Birmingham, to Hull, Bradford, to Glasgow, Edinburgh, Southampton. I put that spread across. And right now, obviously, with this uh, change of situation, it's now phone uh, uh, consultations. Uh, otherwise, all therapies are mm, cannot be practiced again because you know the, uh, of the the new rules and regulations. Uh, but it was to uh, to get to them. If they can't come to you, you go to them. That was the idea. Yeah, Amazing. and it was that it's uh, you've got to be energetic. It's tiring. You've got to make sure you've got everything. It was uh, you know it's like having a mobile uh, van on the move that would uh, you know uh, carry all the products where I can mix and match uh, in in my van and uh, treat patients uh, along uh, side with the symptoms that they had. Yeah, wow. so that was the inspiration. Yeah. Amazing. Wow. That's uh, a lot for, especially as a woman to do all that. Can you tell us a bit more of your, because you went also in other countries, rural countries where women don't do this. Tell us a bit of that, please, as a woman, uh, firsthand to be outside. What were the complications? What were the rewards? Share with us, please. Oh, the complications were, um, I think if you go fearless, the complications are not there. If you brave your journey, leave home with a prayer, and your, uh, your project is true and authentic, and then God is there with you to guide you. I remember when I was going to go to Uganda, and I, I told my parents, and they thought, oh, I'd be murdered, I'd be killed, I'd, uh, you know, there are gangs out there. And I found it the most amazing country because, uh, you know, we knew Uganda as uh, ferociously violent, uh, you know, uh, during the time of uh, the late Idi Amin, but it had become so much more placid country. I was so heartedly welcomed. I remember going into the Uganda embassy on the uh, 19th of December when the office was the last day of business and uh, I put my project forward um, uh, to the counselor there who was representing Uganda. And within two minutes, I was in the office and I, within about seven minutes, I was out with a stamp and a visa to travel to Uganda while people were sitting there for so long thinking, oh, what the hell did she do different that we haven't done, you know? So it's taking, uh, you know, your passion and your bravery with you. Uh, uh, the I think the objection was more from the family to say it's not a safe country to go to. Um, but I, like I told you, where there's a will, there's a way. I managed to achieve that. And uh, it was amazing. Met, met the most amazing people, the most humble, most trusting drivers on the way who, you know, could have, uh, you know, just uh, snatched anything and run away, you know, uh, because they were so genuinely true to their service. I trusted them. And the same thing happened in India, you know, going into very remote areas, working with people with addiction, where you could be, you know, for that moment, be spat on or something thrown at you because their behaviors can change. They were so humble. They were so humble. It just made me cry that these are true, genuine people who have lost their track. And all they want is passion and going back to their spiritual journey and find where they went wrong. Because uh, you can't blame somebody who's gone through a rough journey. You can only find and help them to find their road back to recovery um, and help them and make them feel important rather than rejected because they were more rejected by the family and by the, uh, the neighbors and the community. But getting them back into the community, even working with these addiction centers um, was anything up to 10 months. And then working with the widows uh, who had been widowed in the 1984 Ahmed um, the attack um, by the government 
that that was a real tragedy to see how these women were coping and just to help them and to give them ideas and that encouragement and the tears they shed and the stories they shared. It just made me feel like, thank you, God, you've kept us so comfortable uh, and so safe while these women are braving everything, everything that's gone against them. Um, that they are battling with young families uh, was just to give them a helping hand and to show them how they can actually have a living, which is just amazing. It was amazing. And then obviously, even going down to Colombo to study and going to remote villages, you know, uh, when you're walking there and you look a little different or you look foreign straight away, people do stare at you, but the you know, you just create that positive aura uh, and they welcome you wholeheartedly you know if you anything you if you put fear in it it doesn't work does it no, you got it the doesn't. elephants in the background if you're fearful and you start running away from them they'll charge at you <laughs> 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 you know so it's isn't it just yeah so don't it's, create it's... that fear create that uh, confidence within you and then your aura reflects onto the other person but it's so, um, uh, it's uh, just heartwarming and so rewarding to help people to find their track and their journey uh, where you, money and monetary value doesn't come in. It is your passion to help your community or people outside your community, whether it be food, clothing, or setting up their business. Um, it's uh, just so rewarding, even more than years and years of monetary wealth that you build up, you cannot compare that blessing you get from these lost astray people. It's just so amazing. Really, really a beautiful journey. Yeah. And Reiki also helps me all along the way. You know, you Reiki yourself, uh, you create that positive, amazing energy and you channel it to people. Um, you are there, you know, putting out signals of positivity rather than negativity. And it's helped me to be free, uh, to be in these treatment cramps, uh, camps so rare, but also in Italy was amazing. I went to Italy, uh, Barki, when there was a earthquake and uh, Oli went there for uh, about three weeks was my aim. I ended up spending three months yeah, working and giving a free service of aqua punching, helping people to recover and giving them nutritional Ayurveda remedies, which are being shipped from here to Italy. And the amazing recovery of people who had traveled by boats and by ships and uh, tracked their journeys to find another life in another country, another continent. Uh, it was so rewarding, so, so rewarding. I can write books and books of it. It's just finding the time. Yeah. Wow, that's really uh, yeah. Thing. It's a journey of self-discovery and realization how amazing, uh, you know, uh, the world is, uh, but there's so much suffering that we can ease that off if, uh, you know, half of us put our energy into it and give them that hope, that hope to be able to come out of their sticky situation, that hope to have a better life and a hope to be able to uh, have better uh, you know, generation of youth coming out with education. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow, it is amazing to actually see and experience in different places and different countries, different cultures and traditions, and to take that in and also for you to give out your own uh, as yourself and to actually get the rewards to see the people that you're helping yeah. and to father yeah. that experience that's really amazing tell us a yeah. bit more of the when you help with the fertility tell us a bit more in that area how you help those women how you help the the couples and where did it start yeah i work it all started from Ayurveda remedies and uh, preparations. And I realized, obviously, 
with when you're doing holistic medicine, as I'm a Ayurveda practitioner, I do echo punching, colon hydrotherapy, juice and diet. Um, the whole bracket of any treatment or illness comes in through this whole holistic treatment. If it's not Ayurveda, it might suit, it might suit uh, uh, them with aquapunching, opening the pathways. Or if there's too much blockage, too much distress, it might be Reiki initially, or too much anxiety, too much uh, uh, depressed feelings of negativity. You need to shift those. So fertility obviously comes in through holistic medicine where couples approach me over years now and uh, uh, this year uh, it's only January but I've had uh, two women who've already given me their great news and they've managed to go and get their private scans done because the normal scan waiting was too long and uh, I had this amazing news and even from November and December uh, so we are now in total of uh, just from July last year to January now we have got 13 women I've got who have uh, progressively conceived successfully and it's a journey it's a journey where you need to prepare them because polycystic ovaries you, you'll appreciate is more complex where they've already been told they'll never conceive naturally so they might have to be you know uh, have to have donor eggs they did not want to go through those journeys and uh, over the three to four very rare it's been five months successfully cleared their polycystic ovary um syndrome and uh, they're able to uh, fert, uh, have normal cycle uh, uh, and uh, manage to conceive after having right egg production and then take them through the journey through also looking at their diet before pregnancy, during pregnancy, and even right up to uh, helping them to breastfeed the baby successfully. So it's such an amazing journey. You become part of that family. It's like a, being a godmother. Yeah. Uh, and uh, now we've got these 13 women to work with uh, and it's going to be amazing, magical. Already I was working with a few that had bloatedness, one who was getting low blood pressure and she didn't know why she was drowsy and why she was so sleepy. And I said, look, I want you to borrow a machine because you can't come here, check your blood pressure. And immediately we realized she was 89 over 50 and that was ridiculously low and gave her the diet, nutrition, sent her the supplements, and uh, within two weeks, she's not got any symptoms at all. But it's just the delay in getting into hospitals and getting the, your, the appointments people are seeking out for holistic medicine. And right now, you'll appreciate how much nutrition, diet, and supplements are being spoken about, and people have become so much more aware mm. of what they're eating, cooking, and shopping. Uh, it's never been before, I think, People were so locked up in this fast pace of life, what nature threw at us and, and how this whole virus has become pandemic, it's made us realize and home in that uh, nothing like home cooked food, yeah, which was always in my uh, dictionary. Uh, but for some people, you know, cooking a, a whole meal at home was a job. So get the fast food, eat and sleep and feel lethargic the next morning, start that same cycle again. But yeah, it's been an amazing journey because for some of the women, I have to also work because one of the most complex cases was eight miscarriages. Wow. So I had to work. She had had eight miscarriages and it took, uh, took us three and a half months to get her to the right fertility stage. And then when I told them to go ahead with copulation, uh, they were successful and uh, they're now on their second baby. Uh, but between those two years, three years, uh, they weren't on any contraception, but she didn't conceive naturally until now. So in January, I had the great news. So here we are, you know, rejoicing that. But I always put God into my picture, Barky, because nothing can be done with the will and that great, um, you know, blessings from Almighty. So humbly, always grateful to, uh, you know, why grew Akal Puruk, who helps me to think right for that patient. And for that moment, your mind is, you know, on the right track. Um, it can never be done without uh, uh, his blessings. And that's always, even after that, I've had good news for anything, joint pain, it would be colitis and Crohn's is a very great specialty of mine because as a colon hydrotherapist, uh, I work with the colon from time and memorial. That's where my first therapy started from. Um, everything works from way down 
to the uh, to the gut and up to the brain that you cannot absorb products if you don't have a good bowel system if you don't have a good balanced uh, small intestine you're going to be malnutritioned and demineralized uh, and that's where uh, most of these women have managed to and all these women have have delivered in my past uh, cases safely few have had to have emergency cesareans uh, which were only because the babies didn't turn round. They somersaulted at the last minute. Otherwise, uh, it's just so rewarding, so rewarding, just amazing. Because uh, I think, you know, there are, in the Indian culture, uh, a lot, today is one of our auspicious days. Uh, a lot of women do do abortions if they find out it's the female gender they are carrying because of the burden on the parents for dowry and all in India. And that was another mission I took uh, in India of trying to get women to become aware of not to, uh, you know, abort uh, their female uh, babies that they are carrying once they find out uh, through backdoor clinics. But, you know, uh, let the child come into your world and they all bring their own uh, charm and uh, uh, luck with them. You know, every child is blessed by God but never try to get rid of it because uh, the society won't accept you've carried another female. Uh, and that was education. It is still being practiced, not as much, uh, because I remember here in UK as well, I've had some girls who had traveled from India, who whilst they were in India waiting for their um, um, travel and their visa to be approved, did fall pregnant within the first few months of their marriage and aborted because it was a female. But when they came back to England, two, three years later, they couldn't conceive until they had treatment, you know. So, you know, God, you need to accept what God gives you, uh, you know, as a gift and uh, treat every human being as they have the right to be born, isn't it? So that's where the journey of uh, fertility it is a, a roller coaster journey. Sometimes, you know, when the couple tell me, "Oh, they're going off to the uh, to the to the theater to deliver," and with one of them, I didn't receive any news for about two hours, and there I was, I couldn't sleep. I was just, uh, you know, hoping that everything was fine. Uh, and when I got the news, it was uh, rejoicing, really, um, and only because it was a minor complication. Uh, they had to do a cesarean uh, and uh, but at least at the end of the day they had had this uh, bundle of joy in their arms that's the most amazing thing yeah it I is. think the whole journey of holistic medicine and uh, natural medicine now has changed so much through 2020 and now 2021 that people have begun to realize uh, you know uh, we need to take care of ourselves and our well-being um, although you'll appreciate when we used to have humble food at home, uh, I think that time uh, way back in the 60s, uh, food was not have heavily, uh, you know, sprayed or pesticides and chemicals were not used in the soil. Um, you know, food was more, more nutritious and wholesome. And mothers used to use clay pots and they used to use the jiko, yeah, the charcoal flame uh, yeah. fire. Uh, and uh, it was cooked on slow heat and not cooked, overcooked, and eaten in that one meal time, but not reheated. And all those things, we've gone back to basics now, trying to say, oh, don't do this, do this instead. Don't cook on high food, have partially semi-raw food. Juicing back then was normal, you know, for us. Uh, it was only when I came here, I realized and began to appreciate juicing a lot more because the first thing I started doing when I came here was, it was so cold for me, I started drinking coffee and I became a coffee addict, you know, up to even eight cups of coffee a day. And when I had to get off coffee, it was like getting off drugs. I had, uh, I had um, cramps, I was uh, hallucinating. I was getting this jittery caffeine moments where my body needed caffeine. Oh, wow, it was like a, a good two and a half week detox to the day I came on to just a grain, one grain of coffee in a warm glass and then bang, finished. And then started my juicing journey. <laughs> then I realized what addiction is really. And the same thing with addiction with sugar, you know, you and I know we were not, sugar cane, mango, fruits, 
you know, we would pick them up from the tree uh, and just eat them, just rub them on our jumper and carry on eating them, you know, because sprays were not used and getting pure natural honey and beautiful fresh eggs from the farm. And I don't know if you remember, the milkman used to come with fresh milk. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I yeah. used to love it, love the, cre- the the full cream on it. And we never knew what fat was because we used to eat good fat, you know, purified <laughs> butter and ghee was in our diet. Yeah. Right now, the modern thing is, oh, don't have ghee and don't have butter um, because it will make you fat. But, uh, you know, 60 percent of your brain is fat. So you do need good fats. You do need the right oils for nurturing. And this is where the younger society and the younger girls have to be trained back to good food eating habits. And a lot of the couples, darling, that come to me, Barki, already are on a not a good path of eating and are seriously malnutritioned. Although they might be obese, they might be big, but internally, uh, you know, their body is shattered and it's uh, like a starvation, like uh, in a desert. Mm-hmm. So you need to nurture them again back uh, to good health and good diet. Yeah. Wow. And um, congratulations for the 30 women. Oh, my goodness. That's amazing. 13, yes. Number. And, now um... from July to January was two news. Now it's only the uh, 13th today. I've got two new, two couples now still on conception mm-hmm. program. And I'm hoping to hear from them soon. As Amazing. Well. Congratulations and, on that. And That's the prayers really are there every work. morning for everyone. There was a patient who wasn't uh, getting a job. And every morning, very early hours of the morning, I was sending Reiki healing every morning for months on end. And he's, he's got a job. And, <laughs> and I used to say, you know, you're in my prayers every day. Everything will be fine. Just hang on in there. Mm. And I got the grand news on this week and he started his job. That was uh, really, really exciting to know. Yeah. That's so in our prayer, you know, you pray for the universe. Mm. And when you pray for the universe, you come into that prayer as well. And it and something always positive comes back to you as well. Yeah. Exactly. Because end of the day, when we have the the power that is beyond us, beyond ourselves. And if we can be able to use that to actually mm-hmm. ask for that higher power, to ask for us as well to let go of the things Uh that we cannot control it helps with our mindset with our healing process and as well and this is what we need as a human being but then now like the home cooked meals the understanding of where we used to be where what is the good fat or what is the bad fat and that all comes into down to actually um teaching and training or retraining or relearning Mm -hmm. of this Mm -hmm. new way of thinking because in the modern society like you said it's all they all like no 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 don't eat butter because it's not good for you it has Mm processed or don't don't have processed things because they're not good for you don't have this so it's kind of like um and people, yes, in especially Western country, it's easy to just call in, come and bring, uh, bring me a food, you know what I mean, rather than cooking yourself and not knowing what that food was cooked and how it was cooked and what yes. it is, you know what I mean? So all of this and what you're doing is to teach the what we're learning. And yes, the pandemic comes along and people having more aware of, oh, I want to be healthy. Oh, I need to change the way I'm living my life. I need to do Mm -hmm. something better for myself. And Mm -hmm. you are already there. You're already teaching. You're already uh, doing, because you've had like um, the, your radio, you are hosting a radio and TV as well for over two decades for the vegetarian cooking. Now, tell us a bit more because when you're teaching and you are sharing that knowledge to people, what is mm-hmm. the, um, how do you go about it when, especially for younger people, to get them into cooking and get them to actually yeah. like, hey, let's start like the way we used to do, you know what I mean? Let's yes. have fun at the yeah. same time. Yeah. I mean, that also all inspired from patients saying, oh, well, you're saying I should eat this and I should eat that, but I don't know how to do it. And I said, okay, fine. Uh, I'll start the cook shows. And that's where the cook shows took birth. And uh, then it was trying to create simplicity where even girls said, oh, well, I don't know how to make dough for chapatis. Okay, fine. Basics. We'll start. But, you know, you and I, we would just walk around, copy mom, and there was no fixed recipe. 
and her biggest recipe uh, uh, and cooking was the spice of love. And we followed that, you know, and uh, today it's cooking with stress. And it's trying to tell people that steer away from your phone, switch it off. It's therapeutic to cook and to cook with foods that they never had experienced, even doing a veg burger, you know, uh, with a few, uh, with half a can of beans and uh, broccoli, potatoes, sweet potato, ginger, garlic, herbs. Literally, you can make about six burgers so much cheaper uh, with under a pound of 50, you know, for a family wholesome with vegetables still left over to put on the side. So that's where I thought, fine, I'll start doing the cook shows and vegan more so, obviously, um, because of the channels I worked with, but also trying to promote that uh, vegan food is good and healthy and it can be nutritious and it can help you build up good muscle. And it does have protein if you use the right foods and you do do the sprouting and you do use the right uh, good proteins uh, balanced with your carbs in the day, you can uh, have a good nourished meal at low cost, you know. But uh, yeah, I think uh, what has happened is been a huge generation breakup where parents were so busy working that the mothers forgot to spend time with their daughters. Or, oh, I, uh, that, I, I nearly thought that was a jaguar. Uh, you know, the jaguar cat, the wild cat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a jaguar cat, yeah. <laughs> Beautiful. Um, that uh, I realized that this is what we need to do and bring them back to basics, yeah. Uh, and even trying to do a creative salad, they thought it would never taste right. Mom's salad never tastes right. But adding the right ingredients, putting in the right oils, you know, uh, and just marinating it with the right things, it's just brought so much, it brings so much more flavor. But then cooking with passion, not with, you know, having a, a frown on your head and saying you have to cook because you have to cook you know I, I think uh, it's just become amazing the whole journey because I find with every patient I'm nurturing and counseling them more into food uh, spending more time into giving them information of where they're going wrong and what foods and what recipes would help them mm -hmm. uh, than partaking the products with them which doesn't take much time preparation takes time uh, the Ayurveda herbs are, are, are all my liquids, uh, very few in capsules, unless I'm doing naturopathy or natural remedies. Uh, most of my Ayurveda products, 99% are in liquid formulations, so they absorb them much quicker. Mm -hmm. But until they don't have the right diet and they don't have the right stomach acid and the right balances of enzymes, or, you know, to be able to break up the protein, the fats, the carbs, they're not even going to absorb that meal properly. So yeah, that's where it all started and spurred from. You know, I think it's like a tree. You start off from the root uh, and the, st the main stem, and then you just branch out. And that's what just happened, you know. It's just branched out. And here I am talking to you, never realized I'll be talking to a sister from Kenya, you know. <laughs> How destinies are meant to meet and where we are and which journey where we are meant to meet somebody. It's just, uh, you never know. Very yeah. true, very true. Yeah. We never know. Yeah. And even for me, read I read your biography and I even missed that. Okay. Until mm -hmm. today, you're like, what? We all come from Kenya. What a coincidence. Uh -huh. But it's mm -hmm. all good coincidence. And this is why we're here is to connect with one another. Is yes. actually having that uh, way of being human and actually seeing each other as a human being and not as exactly. other, other people from different countries. And that's the best yes. thing about it. Yeah. Now, tell us a bit more about your chat show because you are inspiring talks for community related issues. What kind of issues are you, are you talking about in your chat show? Uh, everything, right from uh, traveling from east to west, the difficulties women and families have had, how parents are thinking different to children. Um, you need to be your child's best friend. Uh, infertility, um, telling, uh, you know, the mothers the or mother-in-laws that it is okay for your daughter-in-law to deliver a girl mm -hmm. gender, female, but not to blame her. In fact, the biggest problem is with your son who doesn't carry the right... <laughs> Uh, uh, the right chromosomes, the right genes to, to give the female that boy gender, you know, and that's where the women have to change their thinking, you know, the oh, X and Y chromosomes. Huh? Yes. How did that talk go through? 
Oh, it was good. It was an eye opener. Uh, women, uh, the one uh, lady, in fact, my guest who was here, there talking with me, uh, she said when she had her third daughter, her mother-in-law said, oh, uh, it's a hurricane today. It's a very dark day for us, you know? And she thought there's been a hurricane and a thunderstorm in the house and she felt so bad. Well, the fourth child she had was uh, actually a male gender. And finally, the mother-in-law put her case to rest <laughs> because the Asian community or the Punjabi community for them, a boy gender is most important, but not these days, modern uh, things have changed. People have started thinking different mm. and, uh, uh, you know, uh, parents and more younger parents are favoring both genders. Uh, so that's where everything, we talk about everything. We talk about culture, education, getting the young, older mothers to go out uh, and to even probably learn about a computer course, uh, do craft work, do painting, uh, walking out with nature, you know, uh, connecting with your children uh, more and spending time away from. Some people get so religious and so bound within their own little shell that they forget they need to sit and talk to their children. They're expecting, or the mother is expecting the daughter just to learn cooking, just by the way. Mm. But these days, children have to be told the quantity, you know, how much to do what and what timing and having the right, you know, heating of that particular dish. Because if the temperature control is not right, you can burn your food, overcook it or kill it completely. Uh, so it's literally going back to basics and learning and getting children to also learn to respect their parents uh, and give them the love that they need in later life as well. Uh, because that's another big vacuum that we are feeling back home. There was more connection between living together where the parents were having their children and their sons stay in together and the families were more knit together but now there's everybody's because of smaller homes they are all in separate spaces and i think uh, that connection is not there as much yeah so my topics varied so much uh <laughs> right up to even having exercise the importance sugar and the uh, dangers of sugar too much salt um basic cooking um everything uh, self-care, uh, so many topics. I, I, I've got tons and tons of papers sitting here of the topics we have discussed, but they were amazing. Uh, they are always amazing. And uh, there's no end to creating the topics. It's getting the guests to come over and not to be camera shy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that should be uh, that should be something that is, should be easy as well in some point anyway. But um, yeah. tell us a bit more of your project for the um, irrigation project with Bantu tribe. The, oh, the wow. charity. Yeah. What is it about? Oh. Wow, it was an amazing project. It all started with uh, me going to the Meru National Park um, where the Elsa the lion was and where this daring couple went from UK uh, to Kenya and, and met up with this uh, stray lion, Elsa, who they nurtured. And uh, then she also came back to see them. And uh, if you've ever seen the movie called Born Free, uh, you know, you need to keep a box of tissues next to you as well. And I thought I need to go and see where this Bantu tribe is because I loved geography. And there was me taking a sterilized water from UK, mm. you know, uh, I spent 358 pounds on shipping my water uh, uh, on my safari uh, because even the water in Kenya, I did not, uh, it is not very clean. You do need to have filters. So I thought I'll take these sealed bottles. And when I saw the water they were drinking, um, which is about the 16th of December, uh, several years ago, um, 2006, I decided um, to, the journey was very, very rough terrain. My, the driver from the resort took me there and uh, I was put down to tears because they had no produce, only beans and lentils, very little left. And uh, most of the time they were not even having clean water, which was a more than 30 foot, very dangerous cliff to go down. And I promised them I would come back with an irrigation plant and they said, nah. A lot of people um, say that, but they don't come back. I got back to Kenya, connected with the irrigation company and uh, took the project there and uh, told them, I, I told the chief uh, that uh, don't tell the rest of the tribe that I'm going to be there. 
but you know as the it's so dry the dust uh, starts uh, you know spinning in the air and you, they can tell there's a car coming there <laughs> but they saw you know like two massive trucks mm. three cars you know coming and uh, they couldn't figure out what was happening and when we got there and they saw this massive massive you know 45000 gallon tanks you know two of them taken there with the 12 engineers and labor uh, all under uh, supervision uh, i started with the will to do this project and i thought i'm not going to back out now there were tears of joy the dancing and then the digging started and then the irrigation how it was going to be plumbed took the permission uh, from the park um, chief there uh, who was an englishman and started the project and uh, went back uh, two years later they still remembered me and the produce they are now growing and selling to the market and having wholesome potatoes all vegetables sukuma wiki beans lentils um, carrots you know growing and also taking to the village is it was just such a joy such a wow. joy even then when i went it was quite a not very safe times in kenya but i still brave to go and see them and it was amazing really really amazing to see the joy and same people that i'd seen those two years ago looked so much better so much younger so much more vibrant and healthier and they were having cleaner water you know um so also showed them how to clean that water down from the cliff which was being sucked up uh and how to irrigate it um and then uh, use it efficiently but not to waste it yeah mm -hmm. but to collect the rain water which was very very little rain if any it would rain a few centimeters in four years wow. you know you you'll appreciate as you start going up north it, it kenya becomes drier and drier uh and more of a desert area but uh, another amazing amazing journey barki uh fantastic you've really really homed in to me now today getting all these memory flashbacks you know you do the job and you forget about it but yeah amazing it was a fantastic journey but makes you very humble mm. to realize that you've got so much facility within your own home and the comforts we have here that we just open the tap and we get clean water not 100% clean because i distill my water but at least the water is there as a supply you know yeah so it makes you realize that when you do little things for communities far and abroad um the joy and the the rejoicing uh, or moments are and memory flashbacks are so amazing so amazing and i think uh, like i said to you in the beginning god takes care of it you know you just set your mind to it and when you do put a project um and you set your goals you will be there to achieve them no matter what it is mm. in life um you can achieve them if you are determined yeah wow and uh, you know i still have the basket they weaved for me uh and, and a handbag they weaved for me and i was i really didn't want to take it but they insisted this is a memory a memory that they would never forget you know and the oldest lady in the village who was 95 gave me that gift you know and i was like taking it from uh, a, a, such an elderly person with so much respect you know i had to touch her feet like a mother uh it was amazing very emotional it was very emotional to see when i ba went back i was there crying my eyes out to see that something that was so barren and cracked up with about 3 inches of partition within the soil because it was so dry there was no constant rain had now got the same beautiful red soil and the veg vegetation and the maize and the sugarcane plantation uh you know was fantastic really really good but also connected with the masai tribe a lot you know amazing tribe they are um yeah and went to the village uh took in uh, some really uh, beautiful um nuts and seeds for them which they loved and uh, uh almond milk which they had never tasted you know everything that i had i parted away with and uh, it was really amazing uh so nice to know that they are still keeping up with their tribal traditions mm -hmm. and uh, yes children who went into the far into the village a uh, left villages into the city change when i went to mexico for the agave plant uh, baki I, i saw how the mexican chiefs 
uh, you know, were living in such a beautiful, humble uh, villages with beautiful produce, homemade uh, tortillas, you know, uh, with the home uh, uh, bee, the honey from the bees, agave uh, syrup. Uh, alloy plant, the the gel from the plant they would use, the leaves they would use for cooking, mm -hmm. and the beans produced was uh, you know used to make their you know fajita wraps, tortilla wraps, the Mexican food. Uh, it was so so different to the village uh, to the city food that we mm -hmm. if we have ever tasted one. But their children who left for the city were having blood pressure, cholesterol, diabetes from the young age of 22, 25, mm. while the older people were still healthy, just made us made me realize that what they were doing was so much right, yet cities were, you know, where children had to get out to get uh, uh, more education and jobs, they were coming back home sick and tired, fatigued, while the older people still had energy, were still vibrant and still very healthy, yeah. <laughs> So that was a, a fantastic realization of how, uh, you know, um, some old traditions, when you keep them, mm -hmm. although we might say they are old fashioned, they really do play a big part. We've come, we've realized now that, uh, you know, connecting with nature and walking with nature and seeing the birds, the bees, the sky, the clouds, and generally in that we are showing so much more gratitude, maybe which we hadn't for for time and memorial, you know, just having to slow down our pace of life mm -hmm. had made, have made us realize what is happening around us. Yeah. yeah. So that's been that amazing journey. And wow. It was really, really, really good. Yeah. That's mm. really amazing. And it's true to see the difference between the old and the new or the modern society, what's happening to the people now and having that understanding that where are we going wrong? What is the, mm -hmm. what is that we're doing that is different and how can we take, bring that back to make, to ensure exactly. that, uh, you know, to help one another. Now, what is your mm -hmm. next big thing coming up for you? Uh, next big thing is just going easy with this flow. I'm glad that there is a vaccination in uh, in place. Uh, and uh, hopefully this year will, by autumn, we will start seeing some light. I don't think we should uh, raise uh, uh, big projects right now, but carry on doing what everybody is doing right now with the balanced mindset and nutrition and diet. Otherwise, um, was hoping that things would have gone better last year in September, but we were thrown back again. So I'm not making any big projects right now. I'm just going with the flow and realize that uh, technology and Zooming and talking to you like this with this uh, technology, maybe would have met in a hotel and done an interview one-to-one -one with a camera. Mm -hmm. But uh, uh, this new IT stuff is really making us connect with the world globally. And I will carry on preaching, teaching everything that I have uh, learned in, and, and uh, you know, share the wealth of my knowledge with the people who come to me as the patients or people who call and carry on doing the community service that I'm doing uh, uh, or, and I, that I was doing. So uh, everything will just take pace. I'm not rushing because if you make big plans, you might get disappointed. So just go with the flow. That's the thing. Go with the flow. Uh, we can't criticize the government for saying this and not doing this, doing that and not doing this, because this is a whole new disease that has spread across the world. And uh, some decisions haven't been rightly done, um, for which a lot of people have had to sadly pay a price for their own loss of their loved ones and families. So, uh, really, uh, prayers every day, spending more time with nature, um, doing my distant healing for my patients who can't uh, come in, obviously, right now, mm. and uh, carry on doing, uh, you know, these transitional changes that I love to see rewards are when people come back and say they are feeling much better. You know, that's the real reward. Uh, the time you spent with them, the product you've given them, and then you end up paying the VAT and the tax and everything. That's all just coming and going. But the real reward is when you see that smile and when somebody says, thank you so much, you know, you did this for me. Um, it's That is the, the real value I put in and the joy to say that uh, 
thank you, God, for showing me the light and the right energy you give to that patient for that time and moment. Uh, they have overcome their symptoms. Yeah. It mm -hmm. is. And that is the beauty, the beauty of uh, helping other people. It's not about the money. It's not about anything else or the quantity of uh, how many people you help. But to see that end of the day, the results and how you help yes. that person is the most important thing. Thank you so much for today, for this amazing interview, for actually knowing you as a person, but also what you do and who you help in this world. And I would love to ask you if you're willing yeah. to come back yeah. next time to join us again in this uh, platform. Yes, absolutely, Barki. Anything for the community, anything that would help anybody, uh, it will be an absolute pleasure. Carry on doing what you're doing. It's amazing. I just hope that uh, people have a very, very healthy, very prosperous, uh, and a very happy 2021. Uh, may have, you know, everybody have abundance in whatever they are doing and satisfaction, and also uh, enjoy this moment, this journey of self-discovery and where we have to actually change our whole lifestyle in realization that uh, health uh, uh, is most important and uh, through having a proper body balance um, system, we can actually have a healthier and a happier life, but a healthier and a happier family as well. Because if the mother is healthy, the family is healthy. You know, if you educate a mother, like in India, I used to say you can educate a generation, you know. Um, so let's uh, just keep on and stay focused and uh, carry on doing whatever we are doing best for the community. And you're doing a great job as well. So my salute and respect to you as well, sister. Thank and you thank so you for much. your precious time. I really <laughs> no. appreciate it. it yeah. Thank you we'll for welcoming me to actually have this yeah. moment with you. So thank yeah. you so much. And I'm grateful yeah. as well for to have this uh, understanding and also knowledge for other people out there. Yeah, because everything comes in its time and space because I wouldn't have appreciated colon hydrotherapy if I hadn't had an experience. If my mother was not using anti-parasite program for on us, you know, every mm. three months at half term, she would give us an anti-parasite program. We would go to the toilet, have the biggest poo, and uh, come back and start playing in the river, lose a slipper and come back until I learned and studied colon hydrotherapy. And then I had to ask her what she gave us. And that was an anti-parasite program. And there I was then going out and learning about parasitology and uh, uh, how many thousands of bacteria are living in a human body. Mm. And everything started from something that takes you onto a journey. So everybody right now is going through a journey not necessarily with their present career. Maybe they have taken a different direction just to find what they can keep afloat with. And maybe that's your destiny <laughs> to serve the community at large. Exactly. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank, Thank you, sister. You. Have an, yeah. God bless you. you with your future studies as well. Uh, hopefully when you start them. And kwaheri and asante sana. Asante, and thank you so much. And you here, have you had um, our beautiful, amazing uh, guest for today, Manjit Kaur, to that let's join hands together to make your health your wealth. And for everybody else, I shall yeah. see you next time with another guest. Take care, everybody. So.